Hey guys, it's about 3 a.m. and I was about to go to bed, but we're just sitting here thinking it is so satanic to say you can lose salvation. One of the viewers sent me a thing saying, yeah, this lady said that Jesus gave her a revelation that once saved, always saved is that doctrine of devils. Really, that same revelation has been given to a lot of people, especially those that have these fake hell visits and stuff. Th this is why it's satanic, okay? Anybody that says that does not believe the gospel. At least they're not believing it now. Maybe they did at some point, but they're not now. The reason it's so satanic is because it takes salvation out of God's hands and puts it in your hands. Now you are saving you, you see? It's taking salvation out of Jesus' hands because the foundation is no longer the death, burial, and resurrection, which is the gospel of Jesus, which gives us eternal life. He paid our sin debt. It's wiped clean. He purchased us with his blood. And because we trust in that, we now have the free gift of eternal life. Now, I'm going to give you verses on this to show you that it's satanic to doubt what God has promised us. Now, if you think you can lose salvation, then that means you believe you are doing something to keep it. You think you're doing some kind of work to maintain your salvation. You think you're doing something, some kind of works to keep yourself saved. If I told you like, uh, oh, I'm so glad that, um, uh, Linda was in the water and she was flapping all around and and all of a sudden John jumped out and he saved her. And you'd be like, oh goodness, thank goodness she didn't drown. And I said, well, she did drown. What? You said that John saved her. Well, he did, but she drowned anyway. I mean, it's just stupid. That means she wasn't saved. She was temporarily, you know, had some hope for a minute. Salvation is not probation, okay? There's verses here that God is not going to set something apart wholly for himself, give them a reborn spirit. What's he going to do? Kill the spirit at, that he's just brought to life? He brings our spirit. We were dead in our trespasses, and then we're alive in Christ. The spirit is reborn. Our immortality is restored because of what Christ did. Now, through Adam all die right and and through one man adam now the second adam jesus all live all we have to do is trust that he gave us that life back that he paid our sin debt he died for our sins because the wages of sin is death and he paid that so it's really devilish to take salvation out of god's hands and put it in yours see man wants to have some kind of control and credit for his salvation that's the bottom line that's where all these false religions come from and the way is so narrow there's so many professing Christ now are there some that claim Jesus and aren't saved absolutely we see that in Matthew 7 21 Lord Lord look at all I did in your name I was preaching and casting out devils and all these many wonderful works and they never believed what did they not believe they didn't believe they had eternal life because of what Christ did. They were still trying to earn it through all their works. They acknowledged who he is, and they even acknowledged he died for sins, but that wasn't really sufficient. So we've got to do something else. We're keeping ourselves saved nonsense. No flesh glories in his presence at all. So let me read you these verses here. Uh, the true gospel is that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried and he rose again on the third day. And because of that, we have the free gift of eternal life. It's God's grace through faith. Faith in what? That message. Believing that you have eternal life because of what Jesus did for you. That is the gospel. It is spelled out as what Jesus has done for us. Not anything we're doing at all. Our works determine reward. That's it. They have nothing to do with salvation. See, your faithfulness isn't enough. Your obedience isn't enough. That's why it says, but through the obedience of one. And, and we're not the one because it's not good enough. 
it's not, nobody's promoting not keeping God's commandments. Who, why do you want to offend your father and bring death to your life just because you're saved? You, the opposite happens. You love God because of what he's done for you. So the carnal mind just cannot seem to get this. It has to be uh, revealed by God himself that God give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth that nothing we're doing is getting or keeping us safe. It's God who saves us. There's so many verses on that, that it's God who preserves us to the end. I just found another verse uh, the other night uh, in 1 Corinthians, first chapter. There, there's so many lesser known verses on it, and I've done so many videos on it, but this is why it's so satanic, because it takes it out of God's hands and puts it in your own. It's arrogant. I'm sorry. I know it seems right to man, but the end thereof is a ways of death. So let uh, I'll go one by one here. John 6, 35. We're going to start now. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. But you're saying they will hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But they will thirst. Because you're saying they don't stay that way. You're, you're saying the eternal life is just temporary life until you prove by how good your work, your works don't add up. I don't care how obedient you are, how much of your will you think you're giving God, how faithful you are. It's not enough and it cannot be added. You understand that? Because if you add your works, that's what you'll be judged on. If it be of works, it's no longer grace. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. It's not grace. If you have to do something for it, I, I don't know why this concept of eternal life being a free gift is so hard for people. The bottom line is they can't understand how God, you could just live any way you want and God will still save you. Well, his goal for his children is to be a, a good, <laughs> to be a light to the world. That is his goal for his children, but he will save anyone who trusts in him. Okay, you can't be good enough. You just can't. Now, there are some that we know were never saved. It says that they went away from us because they weren't of us or they would have stayed with us. We know there's false professors. Okay, but that's not the issue here. If a person is really born of God, God's revealed this truth to them. They are trusting only in what Jesus did. Now, most people say, oh, yeah, I'm only nothing but the blood. It's all him. But you can't live any way you want and think you're going to heaven. You see, they still don't get it. They're still trusting in themselves being a good girl or a good boy to get them to heaven. But nobody's good enough. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's going to be people that you don't think should be in heaven, and they're going to be there because of who they trusted in. All right. So let's finish. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. No wise, for no reason will I cast him out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Does Jesus always do the Father's will? Yes, he does, or else he would sin. And he did not sin, and he will not sin. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he's given me, I should lose nothing. Now, the Father's will is not always done, right? Because we have, we, the Father, we pray for the Father's will, right? But we don't always do the Father's will, but Jesus always does the Father's will. Okay, and he said, this is the father's will, which has sent me that of all which he's given me, I should lose nothing. See, God gives us to Jesus and he's going to lose none of us and he's going to cast none of us out for any reason, but should raise it up the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. And that may is not like, oh, he might if he lives good enough. No, may is like, therefore can. So, 
here's the Father's will, okay? God gives us to Jesus. Jesus says he won't cast us out and always does his Father's will. And his Father's will is that he'll lose nothing but raise it up at the last day. His Father's will is that he gives us eternal life and raises us up at the last day and will lose none. Okay? Jesus always does the Father's will. If he loses some, he has not done the Father's will. And what's worse than that, that God has given Jesus someone and taken it from him. That the Father has handed the Son a holy set-apart person that's been born of God and then he's going to take it away. That's what you're saying. If you understood how salvation worked, you wouldn't say you could lose it and think you're sounding righteous or godly. And you wouldn't claim it's a message from the Father because it's wrong. Do you see how wicked it is to say that not only will Jesus not perform the Father's will, which he always does, but that God is going to give his son a person that he's going to lose. It's not going to happen. Let's look over at Hebrews 10.23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. All right? He's faithful that promised. God does not want us to doubt whether he saved us. We can know we have eternal life. Why do we know we have it? Because we believe on Jesus. Our foundation is we believe what he did for us. And we trust only in that. Salvation is of the Lord. It is not of yourselves. It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing the Holy Ghost. We're born again. The Holy Spirit, the seed of Christ is in us. He never leaves us. You cannot be unborn. You're born into the family of God. Are there false professors? Yes. Are there people that say they believe in Jesus, but they never believe the gospel? Yes. Are they saved? No. But anybody that's really saved, once in Christ, and then Christ is in you, he will never leave you. Even when we believe not, yet he abides faithful. Can't deny himself. If he has made a promise, he will keep it whether we believe it or not. Because he can't lie. Here, let's go over to Romans. On top of God giving the Son, God the Father giving God the Son, his people, and Jesus promised to lose none. Now, God the Father won't lose any because he's not going to give his son someone that he's going to lose. All right? this You have to take salvation and put it back in God's hands and not your hands. That's why you think you can lose it. But it's not of ourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. And it's a gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. They are irrevocable. He will never take them back. And don't say you can lose it either because you're not more powerful than God or Jesus. Do you understand that salvation is of the Lord? It's God the Father. God, it is not you keeping you saved. All right? It's God. I read you guys the verses about God presenting us blameless to the end. I'll give you tons more verses on eternal security. But this is the point I wanted to make. That the reason it's so satanic to say you can lose salvation is to take salvation out of God's hands and puts it in yours. And you call God a failure. Now, in Romans, it tells us that if you're justified, right, that means declared righteous. God has imputed his righteousness on you. You are born of God into his family. We're the children of God. We've been adopted into his family, right? Well, you can't be unborn. But who he justified, that means declared righteous. He also sanctified. And it tells us in Hebrews that we're sanctified by the offering of Jesus' body. 
So we're made holy. Just like the items in the temple were inanimate objects. They weren't holy because of their own behavior. God made them holy. He set them apart for himself by himself. Same thing with us. He sets us apart for himself by himself. Sanctified, set apart, holy by God. Right? Romans 8.29 for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. There's nobody that he's going to save that is not going to be conformed in the image of his son. He's working on that now through experiential spiritual growth. But eventually we'll be in a glorified body and it'll go with our uh, sinless reborn spirit that cannot produce sin. Because one born of God doth not commit sin. The seed of Christ is in him. And he cannot sin. It's not possible. And it says these are spiritual truths that are discernible in the Bible. If you look at it with a carnal mind, you'll never see that. The Holy Spirit has to show you these truths. So please go to the Lord and go to Scripture and ask God, you know, am I responsible? What Do I have to work to keep my salvation? Of course not. Salvation's of the Lord, not of you. Okay, and it says, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, this is the part I want you to see. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Glorification is the final process of our salvation. That is when we get our glorified bodies. So if you are called out, and justified, if you are justified, you've been declared righteous because of what Christ has done, you're also glorified. It hasn't happened yet, but in God's mind, it's done. He's not going to justify someone that he doesn't glorify. There's no sense in setting somebody apart, making them holy, giving them to Jesus, declaring them righteous, and then they're lost. No. No. God's not going to lose any, okay? Whom he justified, them he also glorified. So it's a done deal. See, I believe God. It's already done. As he is, so are we in this world. So I'm just so sad that there's such a demonic campaign against our blessed assurance in Christ. And I'm cutting together this video of a woman that says she had a visit to hell and the biggest doctrine of devils is once saved, always saved. I was like, here we go. Let's hear her gospel. Obedience is, oh, so it's works, of course. It's like they don't get the gospel. All they're doing is showing you they don't believe the gospel. They don't understand what Christ has done. We love the Lord. We want to serve the Lord. We live for him. I mean, I work all the time trying to trying to tell everybody how great Jesus is, to preach the gospel to every creature, to pray, to carry one another's burdens. But none of that is saving me. I am saved. That's why we do it, right? Not to be saved or to stay saved. God is responsible for our salvation. Whom he justified, he also glorified. God gave us to Jesus. He's not going to let any of those go. He purchased us. We're paid for. To tell us I paid in full. It's just so sad that, that people have taken salvation and putting it in their own hands. And not only that, they're trying to take the blessed assurance that the Holy Spirit bears witness to. Because it says we're, I gave you guys a verse the other day, um, how that we have the Spirit that tells us, reveals to us the things freely given us of God. And I guess that's why they don't have it. They, they, don't, they don't know the things freely given us of God because the Spirit's not bearing witness to them. I, I pray that you can start to look at it from, from that perspective, that salvation is, is God's deal. He's the one that did it. It's in God's hands, not your own. Okay? God bless, guys.